um, ratio of the volume and your, um, you know, your um, your temperature that for that particular uh, entropy or ratio of refrigerant and the amount of heat that per B in BTU per pound that that cubic foot of refrigerant contains. In other words, as that refrigerant is going through that evaporator, changing states from liquid to the vapor, as it changes state, it's absorbing heat. The volume is going to fluctuate because liquid is more dense than vapor, right? Um, and as, it, as that liquid boils off and it becomes uh, vapor, uh, that vapor expands and it's not as dense. And so you can look at the volume in cubic feet. Uh, at that point, and you can actually measure that the uh, heat contained in that cubic feet of refrigerant uh, in terms of volume, um, and that's that's what your entropy is. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, constant volume feet per pound. Now, as a general rule, um, when it says constant. You need to understand, and you need to put that in perspective. Uh, as, as a general rule, if you've got an air conditioning system and it's running and your temperature outside, let's say, is 90, 95 degrees, and it's, it, it's sort of, uh, you know, stabilized, it's not, the temperature's not going up, it's as hot as it's going to get that day, uh, and your indoor space, your indoor temperature, let's say it's at 75 degrees, and that's, you know, it's pretty stable, you can say that you've got a constant scenario that's, that's happening. Uh, you've got a, a constant pressure. Uh, put your gauge on that pressure, staying on, you know, what, four, 450 psig, um, or you know, four, 400, 600 psia. It's just staying there. It's not moving up and down. Your conditions are stabilized. That's where you could look at your constant volume. This volume is not going to be constant if you're adding heat load. In other words, if it's not as hot as it's going to get, this is going to change to a certain extent. And, uh, so you have to be careful. You have to take it in, in perspective when you look at uh, constant enthalpy and constant volume and so forth. But when you look at volume, they're talking about you know, uh, cubic feet per pound. Uh, and that happens when the refrigerant is in a vapor state. Or a ratio between the liquid and the vapor state as it's evaporating. Okay, we're going to pressure entropy charge refrigerants and systems. Alright, now, this is where they have actually measured the, you know, done some measurements for you. You look at your line, it's on 40 degrees, R410A, this is an air conditioning system. you got a 40 degree evaporator. Uh, and this is the point where the refrigerant enters the metering device. All right, notice that this is your 100% uh, saturated liquid curve, and right in here is where this curve, uh, where, where the liquid goes through the liquid line, and it enters uh, your metering device. Now you can take this line here, and it's just over 120 degrees, uh, and you come over here, and it's pro I'm gonna interpolate uh, you know, this line is your 400, and this is probably your 500, this is your 600 PSIA. So I'm going to interpolate, uh, it's kind of hard to, you know, to get it specifically, but it's just above the halfway mark between 400 PSIA and 500 PSIA. I'm going to say that's probably about 465 or 470 PSIA. And you can convert that to temperature for R410A, and that's your condensing temperature, and this is your discharge pressure. Uh, enters the metering device here, uh, and, and if you'll notice, you're right here on this 60 um, BTU per pound of refrigerant line. There's no refrigeration effect that occurs here. That's the phenomenon of the refrigerant absorbing heat from its own self, but notice what, what changes. Your pressure changes and your temperature changes. <coughs> uh, you go from a little over 120 degrees condensing temperature, which corresponds to your discharge pressure, to your um, uh, your suction pressure, which 
corresponds to your evaporator operating temperature of 40 degrees, uh, which is, I'm going to interpolate this, we're looking at about 125 uh, PSI-G. Uh, if it's PSI-A, it would be 100, 140. You add 15 to 125. Um, you know, 125 and 15 is what, 140? So just keep in mind, your pressures are absolute. If you want gauge pressure, you subtract 15. Now, this is the phenomenon of the refrigerant going through the meter device. The, the pressure drops, the temperature drops, but no refrigeration effect occurs. So it all happens on a vertical line. Now, this is where the real work occurs in your evaporator. you got about approximately 75% liquid here, and if you'll notice, uh, of course, this is in the way of your. Uh, this is in the way of your of, of your curve, but yeah. And at this point, you've got about 75% liquid, 25% vapor in the evaporator. Um, that 25%. That I'm sorry. That 75% liquid is boiling off inside that evaporator. It's boiling at a temperature of 40 degrees. Now, that 40 degree temperature is going to remain constant, and your pressure is going to remain constant. Uh, at that moment in time. If the heat load increases, this may go up and then it'll stabilize and it'll come back down to where it should be. Um, but this is, uh, this is where the real work is done. And if you'll notice, if you start here at 60 and you come over here to, um, you know, to the point where you're, you, 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 all your liquid boils off, it's 100% a, it's a vapor, and that's going to occur on this you know, on, on this curve where you got 100% saturated vapor. That's your 100% saturated vapor curve. At that point, this this little bit here is where, that's that's where you're going to pick up superheat. What's the definition of superheat? Any heat that's absorbed into the vapor beyond the point of saturation. What's the point of saturation? 40 degrees. Let's say in this scenario you got 10 degrees of superheat, uh, your your suction line coming off the evaporator is going to be about 50 degrees if you measure it with a thermometer. You got a 50 degree suction line coming off the evaporator. You got a 40 degree saturated vapor temperature. How do you know that? By your pressure. You know, look at your suction pressure converted to temperature, which they do that for you on the pressure entropy diagram. And so you know that you've got um, you know you you've got 10 degrees of Super heat. It's not not really hard to figure out. Uh, if you'll also notice, um, the real the net refrigeration effect occurs from that 75% liquid to the point of saturation, and that's the net refrigeration effect. That's what you absorb from your conditioned space, and of course that heat's going to be rejected. But you can measure it. You know, you can measure where if you start here at 60. And let's say we go to uh, you know a hundred, a little over a hundred. You got about 40 BTU per pound, uh, uh, 40 BTU per pound of refrigerant in that scenario. And um, you know that's that's just an example of how we use the pressure entropy diagram. And you're always going to have this odd-looking box. Uh, you can also, you know, look at your other things here. Uh, you know, the um, your, um, you know, your your uh, volume, your entropy. What's entropy? It's a ratio of your uh, cubic feet and the amount of heat in, in that particular amount of refrigerant, uh, and that's going to be occurring in the evaporator. Any questions so far? Is that helping you understand that a little bit better? It did. I just made, I more or less just wanted to get the concept uh, and hearing you explain it differently kind of reinforced what I read and what it, you know, um, it makes a little bit more sense now. So okay, anyway. good. All right, we'll move on to the next chart. And then they see the thing about the pressure entropy diagram, it's a graphical representation of what's happening in that refrigeration system. You got your compressor, you got your vapor coming in. And it pumps the vapor up to a high pressure, you got your vapor leaving. And remember, the compressor is a vapor pump. If for some reason you have a malfunction over here on this side and you get liquid back to that compressor, that's bad news. That's called liquid slugging, and that's a common cause of compressor failure. 
but you got your uh, compressor, your discharge line, your condenser, your metering device, your evaporator, and your suction line. Those are your seven basic components. Um, and what does the condenser do? It rejects heat out of the refrigerant, changes the refrigerant back to a liquid. They show a little liquid receiver here. Uh, you got 100% liquid entering the metering device, and remember, uh, it, this is where you have that little funny looking box on that pressure entropy diagram. It happens right here. Uh, and then you have a, a drastic drop in uh, pressure and temperature in the metering device. The temperature of the refrigerant is lowered, and then you got about 75% liquid remaining. And then you got about